Hey there, this video is going to go through how to avoid subtraction and division mix-ups when we are looking at order of operations. So the common recommendation is to simplify both the multiplication and division and the addition and subtraction expressions left to right in order to avoid calculation mistakes. So this is the overall golden rule in terms of simplifying multiplication and division and addition and subtractions. This is an essential rule which will prevent any unfortunate score deductions due to mistakes. Now, there are other ways that we can kind of think about problems and simplify in a quicker fashion that can help you in the time aspect. But I want to point out if these rules or other options confuse you in any way, just stick to simplifying from left to right, multiplication and division first from left to right, and then addition and subtraction from left to right. That will work every time. Some of these things are just helpful with time um, the time aspect. So to start, I want you to consider the following expression, 60 minus 30 minus 20. So with 60 minus 30 minus 20, the correct solution there is going to be to simplify 60 minus 30 from left to right. We'll do our subtraction first. We get 30. And then we have 30 minus 20, which gives us 10. So the correct answer is 10. Some people mistakenly will try to do 30 minus 20 first not doing it from left to right, and they will get 60 minus 10 from 30 minus 20. But 60 minus 10 is 50, which is not correct. So this option is not correct. So I want to point out it's important you go left to right. Additionally, consider the following expression, this time with division. So looking at this problem, we have 24 divided by 4 divided by 2. If we follow the order of operations and we do the division left to right, 24 divided by 4 is 6, and then 6 divided by 2 is 3. So that is our correct answer. Now, some mistake, um, or some people will make the mistake of doing 24 divided by 4 divided by 2 by doing 4 divided by 2 first. 4 divided by 2 is going to give you the whole number 2 then 24 divided by 2 would be 12, and that would not be correct. So I just want to, again, point that out, that you cannot jump around and do different um, expressions or different portions of the expression first. You have to go left to right um, if you just have division or just have subtraction like that. So there are four rules that we can conclude with this information that we just went through. So first of all, solving multiplication and division and addition and subtraction left to right will always yield the correct answer. This is the key thing to remember. You can always come back to um, just solving left to right with multiplication and division and addition and subtraction. Now, it can be helpful to simplify expressions in the most convenient and time-saving way since the test is timed. So with that in mind, in some expressions or drills that include solely addition, so only addition or only multiplication, we can use the commutative and associative properties to help us switch around the order or switch around which um, portions we do first. So for example, two plus six plus four, I'm sorry, two plus six plus five plus one, we can do that in any order. I could technically add two plus one, then six, then five. I could start with five plus one and then add in the two and the six. If it is only addition, remember the commutative and associative properties allow us to switch up the order and switch up which ones we group together. No matter what, you will get 14 when you add those together. For two times four times three times two, we can again, because of associative and commutative properties of multiplication, we can change up the order or change which numbers we multiply and group together. No matter what, you will get 48. So these can be rearranged in any order to get the same result every time. Rule three to keep in mind, you can apply the associative property to subtraction if you first convert it to addition. So for example, three minus one, if we convert three minus one into addition, that would be plus negative one and that equals two. Now, because I change it into addition, I could technically think of this as negative one plus three and get the same answer either way. So if you can convert it into addition, then you can use that um, commutative or associative property to change around the order or the grouping and still get the same answer. That can sometimes come in handy, not always, but sometimes it does come in handy. Another example of that, our example we took earlier, 60 minus 30 minus 20. 
With 60 minus 30 minus 20, if I change it into addition, that would be 60 plus negative 30 plus negative 20, and then I could change around the order. I've got negative 30, negative 20, and 60, and I'm adding those together. So I can use the commutative or associative properties to group different ones together or change the order of the numbers or anything along those sides or along those lines. Additionally, um, the minus sign can also serve as a factor with the help of reverse distribution. So what that means is if I had an expression like 60 minus 25 minus 15 minus 10 with all subtraction here, I could actually reverse distribute the negative to the 25, the 15, and the 10, okay, the remaining um, digits or the remaining numbers beyond the first number. And I could put those three into a set of parentheses with addition in between them and still have that minus in front of the parentheses like distributing a negative. And that would turn it back into what it originally was if I did distribute that negative out, minus 25, minus 15, minus 10. So it means the same thing, but that can be helpful because then you could actually just add up the 25, 15, and 10 to get 50. And then you're just doing 60 minus 50. And 60 minus 50 is 10. And that would get you the correct answer. So I like to think about this um, if you want a way to remember it in real world terms. Um, if I, let's say somebody owes me $60. If somebody owes me $60 and they pay me $25 and then they pay me 15 and then they pay me 10 and I'm trying to figure out what do they still owe me instead of doing 60 minus 25 minus 15, minus 10. If I know that they paid me 25, 15, and 10, I'm just gonna, going to go ahead and add up 25, 15, and 10, and I get 50 and say, okay, they paid me $50, so I can still do 60 minus 50 to know, okay, they still owe me $10. So if that helps you, great. If not, you can find another way to think about that, but um, that, that multiple subtraction or um, subtracting multiple times is, really the same as subtracting what all those three numbers added together comes out to be. Rule four, you can apply the associative property to division if you convert it to multiplication. So we've talked about that in a previous video. If I have nine divided by three, in this case, nine divided by three, you're probably going to know that one off the top of your head and you're going to know that it's three, but showing you in a simple format can help you understand when it gets to be a little less simple. But um, nine divided by three, if I wanted to, I could change this to multiplication and that would be nine times the fraction version of um, th divided by three, essentially. So that would be one divided by three. So nine times one divided by three is the same as nine divided by three. So multiplying by one over the number um, will turn it into multiplication. And then technically I could switch the order of that and do one third times nine. Again, in this problem, it would be much easier to just do nine divided by three and get three. However, we can um, change it into multiplication in problems where that might help a little bit more. So for example, the 24 divided by four divided by two I could change the divided by four into times one fourth, divided by two into times one half. And then technically at that point, I could change the order because 24, one fourth, and one half are all being multiplied together. So I can change the order um, that these are being multiplied in. You can see in my example right here, I am doing one fourth times one half first and doing that first. So that's the associative property of multiplication that's allowing me to do that. When you multiply fractions, we multiply across the top and across the bottom. So 1 times 1 is 1. 4 times 2 on the bottom is 8. So we have 24 times 1 eighth. 24 times 1 eighth. If you think of 24 as a fraction over 1, 24 times 1 across the top gives us 24. 1 times 8 across the bottom gives us 8. 24 divided by 8 is 3. So that is, again, this isn't necessarily a problem that you might do that if you know this division in your head, um, each of these pieces. But this process can come in handy, especially if you're working with bigger numbers where maybe you don't know that right off the top of your head. It might be helpful um, in other circumstances. And then finally, it is possible to do what we did over here with the subtraction um, symbol and changed it into subtracting a set of parentheses with addition in it. 
Same concept here. We can start with this 24 divided by 4 divided by 2, and we can change this 4 um, and this 2 into 4 times 2, like you see down here. And that 4 times 2 um, multiplied together is 8, and then do 24 divided by 8. So that is another way to think about it. It's almost like that um, opposite of distributing or reverse distribution, where um, we are changing that divided by 2 into times 2 and multiplying it by that 4 to figure out what we're actually dividing by as a whole. So in summary, we looked at how we avoid subtraction and division mix up we talked about how we can always just rely on simplifying from left to right if we forget or don't fully understand these tips or tricks that we talked about. So those four rules, um, you want to make sure that you remember those if you're going to use them, or again, rely on um, multiplying and dividing from left to right and adding and subtracting from left to right if we don't remember these other tricks or tips.